Well, hello there, folks. I hope you're all doing really good. Uh, well, it's been probably eight hours or so, maybe a little bit longer since uh, I installed the frets in this Les Paul here. This guitar belongs to me, and it was in dire need of some frets. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do today is uh, just nip off what's sticking out. Uh, past the binding right now and then we're gonna start doing some fret filing and get these ends cleaned up uh, as you can see my hands are working some kind of slow today oh my wrists and hands are just killing me from doing this I don't know how much longer I can do these they're just really starting to get to me unless I can figure out a different way and still be accurate you know that's the thing uh, I understand there's different methods and tools but this is just the way I learned and and uh, it just helps me stay accurate this way uh, I did remove the pit guard, just slid it out of the way so I can get in here and cut these off. And we're going to need to get in there with a file anyway. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, like I said, I'm not taking a ton off, but just trying to get what I can that's hanging out. The less you have to file, the better, okay? All right, so that's a stat. I'll pick these little little nibs up so they don't scratch my guitar. You want to make sure you get those off there because get yourself a little can and throw them in there as you do it is probably the best way, honestly. And If not, you're going to get stuff under your guitar or somebody else's and probably scratch it. That's just how it goes. Okay, so the next move is to get out the tools... And we'll start uh, finishing these off. Okay, so now it's that time to start filing these uh, fret ends down. And this is what I'm using here. Uh, these work pretty good. It has two files embedded in it. It's kind of some sort of like epoxy or something resin cast thing that's really slippery, slippery that rides on your frets. And uh, the file is, you know, recessed enough up into the block that it usually will not hit the top of your guitar. Les Pauls are really close. I mean, but it is what it is. So one file is at a 90 and one is at an angle. So if you want to angle your fret wire off on the end, you can do that as well. Uh, I just want to make note that this is actually a 90 degree here, okay, with this uh, with this file. So if your fretboard has a radius to it, you know, let's say you're, you're on a fretboard that has quite a pronounced radius to it, what will happen is this will ride like this, okay, almost like the angle file, but it will actually go into the binding and dig the binding, so... Just be really sure and and don't just start filing like crazy. Take a few strokes, look it over, and, you know, add water and repeat, that kind of thing. All right, so let's get going. I did remove the pit guard. Uh, at least swung it down out of the way, so I don't... Uh, you need to to get way down in here and, and get these last few frets. Uh... Gibson Les Pauls are not the funnest guitar to refret, but it is what it is. They all, it's always had to do fret work over the body, no matter what kind of guitar it is, at least in my experience. So, so it takes a little bit to get these evened out, you know, it's the way you can run the file all the way up and down. So what I do is try to find the high ones. And get those kind of worked for us. So my file just stopped right there. I know that one's high. 
So I'm switching hands just for a second because I'm not left-handed and my hands are just beat up today. So, okay, so that's the stack. And uh, we'll just keep doing this until we get these worked in close to the uh, edge of the binding. And uh, I'll switch files eventually and just go to a flat mill file. And, uh, you know, take it in the rest of the way with that. Whoop. That's why I don't like using these because they can pop up out of there and when they do you go across your frets it'll it'll scratch them which you know it's not the end of the world right now because I do need to level these frets uh, I went over it with a fret rocker I just checked them this morning and there's some high ones so I'm gonna have to take a sand and beam and, and level these up a little bit they're not bad I've seen worse uh, but nonetheless, it's got to be done. So we're just trying to get them, like I said, work down so we can uh, start getting in with a, a little finer file. And uh, we'll bring them in the rest of the way with that. Okay, sometimes I take this, a big file like this too. You got to take the nut off to do it, but this... Uh, this shortens the, the work time up a lot. Uh, just got to be really careful, but this will file them off pretty fast. And uh, sometimes I'll use this just to get some sort of a straight uh, line established across it before I start in with my other files. Even this one, a lot of times I'll get this big file out and get the bulk of it down. So that way, uh, I'm not spending a ton of time with the other one. And like I told you before, I, you have to be really careful using this block one because if it's got a radius, like I said, it can tip the thing and you can file into the side of somebody's binding or your own or that kind of thing. So uh, pretty much everything you do with a file around a guitar you just you gotta be careful it's common sense and there's no other way around it it takes a special touch and a ton of patience okay we're getting there we're getting close I'm gonna keep uh, cleaning them up a little bit and the next move will be more than likely for us to start uh, leveling the tops off get everything leveled up and uh, then we'll start polishing and cleaning the ends up and get rid of all the sharp uh, fret ends that are sticking out and we'll be good to go all right let's keep moving okay so we're gonna take this little mill file here now it's fine and uh, what I like to do is hold my finger so it hangs, my pointer finger is kind of hanging down below the edge. And I just kind of ride that along, you know, on the tape here that I've got this taped off. This is the hardest part of any fret job right here is doing, a, you know, a guitar that the neck will not come off or an acoustic guitar where you're working over the body. And it's uh, it's really tedious and takes a long time to get this stuff down so the better you can fit your fret wire when you put it in the less you, you will be doing this but there is a trade-off it's you know tedious trying to cut your fret wire exactly too and fit it and check it and fit it and recheck it and you still end up having to do this in the end there's no way around it really uh, it just takes time that's all folks and again just try to tape it off and like I said I use my finger as a guide to keep it up off the guitar you could also you know tape a piece of plastic or something down on there to help you too so 
uh, usually I do this section first. I try to get the hardest part of the filing out of the way first and uh, just get it over with so I don't have to keep looking at it and dreading it, you know what I mean? So we're getting there and as you do this, you're going to see a little gap, you know, in between the binding and your file. You just got to keep watching that and make sure you're not going in too deep. And, uh, you know, if your tape comes off, sometimes you got to put another little piece back on, whatever you got to do to protect the guitar. Uh, so, again, don't be in a hurry. This really is all about slow and steady wins the race you know what i mean okay so i'm gonna work on this a little bit down in this area now okay we're getting there still got a few hanging out where the neck meets the body so i'm gonna concentrate on them for a little bit try to get everything even that way when i make a long stroke my file doesn't jump and catch and that kind of thing. All right, I'm going to work on the other side for a little bit now. Okay, so we've got a lot of these cleaned up. I still got to hit this very last one out here, and I'm going to just take a small file and do that, but we've got it to the point where we can use this file now. And what I like to do is just take one long pass across there as best I can and what I'm looking for is here I want I want to feel these if they hang up uh, we've got them pretty good now but once in a while you feel a little bump and when you do you just sometimes if it's really prominent and it sticks out and stops the file dead in its tracks what I'll do is just move ahead and I'll focus on that one little spot for a minute just so I can get everything you know kind of symmetrical all the way down through it so when I file I'll feel just what's sticking out so we're starting to get pretty close here uh, a lot of times I'll do this as well which is going to be hard to do on camera but I'll actually hold the guitar up like this so I can see what I'm doing and I'll run my file along the frets like this. Uh, now you have to be careful not to get into the binding and and that kind of thing but it does uh, give your hands a break and uh, you know it kind of puts you in a different position for a minute or two so you're not just working you know, with the same hand in the same exact direction all the time. Uh, sometimes you have to do that just to get through it, you know. Like I said, this is really hard on the hands, and my hands are already sore just from cutting all the frets and doing that stuff yesterday. So uh, we're going to keep pressing on. We're getting close now, though. We get this pat done. The rest of it, I don't mind. This is the absolute worst pat about refretting a guitar trimming the tangs and filing the edges all right <clears throat> well i got most of this stuff done up towards the end here i think i can live with that so what i'm going to do now is just concentrate on getting these close and flush to the fretboard which we're not far away again i'm just going slow like i can feel that frets high so I'm just going to stop right there for a second and address it. So that way, I just want to make a long stroke through there and not feel any of them sticking out. When we get to that point, we'll stop for a while. Okay. Still got a few high ones down in here, but not too bad. I've addressed most of this stuff up here, so that's the hardest, like I said, to get. I like to get that done as soon as I can. Put the hard stuff behind you. And just 
get to the point where it's not so strenuous and you don't have to take off much more material here so all right that's pretty good we're gonna do the other side some more too uh, I'm gonna pause it because I want to do this right-handed okay well there's a little different view for you I'm trying to do the best I can with the camera work here but I actually have my phone taped right to the headstock right now so you guys can see this and I need to pay attention to what I'm doing here so all right we got one little high one right here I'll take care of that and I got a little bit of an angle going on my file but not much I want to have as much uh, real estate out on the fret ends as possible. And uh, I'm not going to bevel them back much at all. I want all the, like I said, all the real estate I can gain, uh, you know, on the, on the fret wire so the strings don't drop and that kind of thing. Uh, so, again, just baby steps. Take it a little at a time. Uh, I'm on the downhill slide now, so I'm getting really close to to finishing this up, which is nice. And then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay. Yeah, that's getting close. Get a few sharp ones down here still. Uh, they're going to be sharp until you actually dress the ends with a little safe edge file and round everything over. So, again, don't be in a hurry. Just take your time. Do a nice job. That's the whole key to it. Because unless you have a few extra pieces of fret wire, you know, you you can file these in, you know, too close to the fret the fretboard, and you know, you got to pull them out and start over, which is no fun. So just trying to pass along some information to you guys, because. I've already failed and been through all the the learning curves of it already, you know. Uh, and that's the thing, like I said. Whoops. Okay, we're back. Sorry about the uh, the camera. I mean, I just make this stuff up as I go, so. Sometimes to get the right shot, you got to use masking tape and tape the phone to the guitar. In this situation here, at least. All right. So I got a couple little ones sticking out down here. And I can still feel a few, few more here and there, but we're really starting to get to the point where we're going to start just leveling here in a second. Again, they're going to feel really sharp to you. Until you get everything, you know, finished off on the ends of the fret wire. And uh, once you get that established, should be good to go. i got to put another piece of tape down here over this pickup. I don't want any filings getting in, getting in there and getting inside the pickup coils or anything. So it's always good to tape them off. Don't forget them magnets. And we got a lot of steel filings coming off these, so we all know where they'll end up, right? All right. Okay. I'm gonna call that good right there for now. I'll probably go over them again here in a minute, but we're gonna get the uh, sand and beam out next, and uh, we're gonna level them off. Okay, so you take a fret rocker, set her on there. Now I got one rocking right there, third fret. Hear it? Uh, it is down in there good. It happens. Sometimes, you know, the fret slots can be a little different. I got a few that are sticking up here and there. Sometimes you get lucky and they go in perfect and you don't have to do any leveling this is pretty minor though uh, 
So I think what we're going to do is just start in and we'll level them up. So I'm using this uh, uh, little uh, sanding beam here. Works pretty good. Uh, it's just got some fine paper. It has different grits of paper on each side, okay? So you can go out and just get the edges with one, you know, if you'd like. Or you can use this one to just kind of smooth them up after. So and you're going to hear these little clacks that sound like train tracks if they're high. And, uh... I can tell it's a high one down here, so. Now, I like to go all the way out across. I took the nut off the off the fretboard here, too. Uh, I just want to make sure I get a good stroke all the way out across that first fret. Because... If you have the nut on, you're not going to get much sanding there unless you sit here and do that. You know what I mean? So they never come out really truly even that way. Uh, I suppose you could hand file that one fret if you wanted to, but I like to do it like this and just take the nut off. And, you know, a lot of times you may have to, uh, you know, put a new nut or install some shims under the one that's there if the fret Y is taller than what was in the guitar anyway so I just like to get it out of there and then I know I'm getting good sanding all the way across this thing okay I can hear a few clacks here and there but not bad uh, I'm going to focus out on the edges here for a second. That's usually where a lot of it is. Uh, sometimes you'll get a few frets. They'll be high right in the center of the fret, too. Uh, I'm not sure why, I, you know. The neck's straight. It's not twisted. But nonetheless, sometimes you get these things. Okay, so let's jump up to the third fret again. Uh, pretty good. I'm getting there. Now you want to keep checking this as you go. You don't want to sand any more off than you need to. Because just remember, you're taking fret wear and fret life away as you do this. But all right, I got a few down here. Uh, again, all right, there's a couple down here. So I'm going to work down here next just for a minute because I do have some some high ones down here that need to get addressed. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I've seen guys take a regular level, carpenter's level, and put adhesive sandpaper on it and do the same exact process. I mean... A lot of different ways to get there, folks. All right, I'm starting to see the uh, the crowns are starting to get buzzed off a little bit now. So I'm going to go back through and give her a check. Got a couple in the middle that are high. We're getting pretty handy, though. Uh, when they get really, really close... I'll stop and I'll usually take them take them the rest of the way with a file or I may even try to crown the uh if it's just a little bit I'll crown them up crown it out of there. Another thing you can do if you just have one fret that's a little high, you can you can sand it off with this or file it either way. So I gotta hit these a few more times and and just make sure we got it right. All right, I'll take my little brush here and just sweep some of the stuff off here and get rid of that fret dust and filings and all that good stuff. Uh, we're looking pretty good here now as far as being level. Uh, I've gone across it with a sanding beam a few times and I've been checking it with a fret rocker. 
everything seems to be good now. Uh, got one little one right there. So what I'm going to do is just take this and I'm going to go in and just kind of file that top down right in the middle. You can use a file to do it too, either way. Okay. I'm going to go right down the middle of these. There's a few here and there, but not bad, like I said. When it gets right down to just, you know, the thickness of a hair or something, I'll probably take the rest out with uh, a mill file and my crowning file. Uh, and I'll dial them in from there. Okay, let the crowning begin. <clears throat> so I'm just using this... Uh, crowning file to put some crown back in these. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Uh, you know, some guys tape their fretboards off. And you can use a... I'll show you a little tool you can use. Okay, so you can buy these little pieces of metal that you can put on to protect your fretboard. They make different widths, that kind of thing. They make some that will go down over the edges, so you can work on the edges, too. Uh, I do use them, uh, mostly on customers' instruments. Uh, on my own, it's not really such a big deal, so, you know, I try not to dig into the fretboard. Make sure your, your crown and file is sitting up on the fret and not just going in the wood. Now, what this will do... This will uh, put a round top back on the fret after we flattened it off. These files have a concave uh, side on each side. One's a little bigger than the other, so you find out which one you need and uh, go from there. I'll even take some of the edges off a little bit as I go. Not a lot, but... Like I said, you don't want to drop these ends off, so you want as much real estate for your strings to ride on as you can. So this, this is kind of an important step, just to make sure you don't uh, burn them off. Now, there's a lot of different crowning files out there. I have a few different ones. Uh, I have a Baroque file, which works really nice. Uh, you just gotta pay attention to what you're doing because that will take your frets down in a hurry if you don't use the right side. It's a three-sided one, so, you know, a lot of guys will just use a small triangle file, a three-sided file, and grind a safe edge on one side of it and uh, tape it off and then just work each side and, you know, build the crown up that way. Uh... You can buy these files here. They're inexpensive, and some people don't like them, but I don't have an issue with them. I, I, I've gotten used to them. They work decent. Uh, it's all personal preference. I've even seen guys... I saw a video a few days ago of a guy that had one of these in a, in a, uh, a Sawzall. He had cut the handle off and made it to fit into a sawzall or a reciprocating saw to go back and forth at high speed. Uh, yeah, it's probably a lot easier on your hands, but I just see a lot of room to make mistakes. So, uh, again, slow and steady wins the race. When I do it this way, I can look at each fret every stroke see what I'm taking off and that kind of thing so again I think taking your time is the best bet okay so <clears throat> excuse me we've got <coughs> excuse me wow everything is crowned pretty good uh, I get a few more that, to address but just on the edges mostly so what I'm going to do is just clean those off right now. And uh, not a lot of pressure here, just a little bit. I'm just trying to soften that edge right now. I'm 
Okay, and we're going to do the same thing up here. Okay. Those all feel pretty good. I don't feel a lot hanging up. Uh, you got to look real close, though. You'll see a little flat spot on the top of the fret. And if you don't get that cleaned up, you may end up with a string buzz right there. This is why we do it, because... If the frets are flat, oh, sorry guys. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some micro mesh, a micro mesh pad, and I'm gonna just start to polish these up on the tops. What I like to do is just let it bridge a couple frets and uh, make sure you get all the filings off there, okay? You don't want to drag those across the wire or across your fretboard. So I'm using very little pressure here, and I'm just looking to uh, shine the top up so I can see if it's flat still or if it needs more crowning, that kind of thing. So this helps get some of the striations off the uh, fret wire too from you know crowning and that kind of thing. I think it's a good idea to clean your files out too, you know, as you're doing it, so you're not dragging stuff, you know, across the uh, fret wire back and forth. I think it makes more striations and scratches, just my opinion, but I usually thunk mine on the on the bench a few times and knock the uh, the filings out of it, so it will. At least I know it's clean. That was my biggest thing about the guy using the Sawzall to do this. Uh, I don't know. I think you're just going to drag steel back and forth across it. I haven't tried it, so it's really hard for me to, to knock it right now. But uh, I don't know. I'm just stubborn and old school, and I'm going to probably keep doing it th this way because it works and I know the method so you know uh, we'll see I may try it someday just to see if it works good uh, again I just don't think this is a speed a speed trade you need to really take your time doing anything on guitars in my opinion because sometimes you can make mistakes that are, uh, you know, not reversible without doing more repair work. So we don't want to repair our own mistakes. We just want to repair the ones that somebody else made. Okay, so that's getting a good shine on them. Uh, this will be the next method I'm going to show you. And then we're going to probably wrap this up because we're getting into a long video here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to use is this little safe edge file that you can get from Stu Mac. So one side is smooth, and that's called a safe edge. And there's teeth on the side. Then you have this flat edge, which is perfectly square. Now what the flat edge is for is to get the actual very little corner of the fret wires, okay? And you can see I'm just making this one motion, right? And just rolling it down over, okay? Try to make the same move every time. And then you want to obviously go back this way and do the same thing. And then, once I get the corners off, I'll flip it over and use the safe edge on the wood and concentrate on the top part of the round, okay? We've already got the corners off, so we just want to concentrate on the uh, the sides of the fret wire, okay? Now, once I get that done, I'll usually get these out, fret erasers, okay? Now, these come in all kinds of different grits. I have a pile of them in my uh, cabinet, but if I can get this out, all right. So, a fret eraser going to look like these okay they come in different grits and it will actually say what it is on it but these have been used so uh, 
it has a little bit of grit in every one of them. And same thing, I'll just use these across the tops of the frets, basically just to polish. And, uh, you know, we'll start with a, a coarse grit, work our way down to a fine one. This isn't removing hardly any material. This is basically just a polish, really, is what we're doing here. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you want your frets shined right up and nice and smooth. So when you bend a string, uh, it doesn't feel dry on the fret wire and they just kind of glide up and down on it. That's, that's the whole trick. And uh, that will make your guitar feel good and play good. So... Basically, that's it in a nutshell, guys, how I do it. And, uh, you know, the rest of this this little project is just going to be me going through the same steps that I showed you. Just more of it. I'll get the nut glued back in and everything. Uh, after we string it, I'll check the, uh, the height. And, you know, the frets weren't really taller than these ones, so it'll probably be okay, but... You know, you want to check that out before you glue anything in permanently. And when you do glue your nut in, just put a drop of glue on the edge of the nut. So when it hits the uh, face of the fret board, that's what you want glue. Don't put it down in the trough. Just a couple dots is good. And that'll hold you right there. And the strings will do the rest. Well, okay, guys. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate all the support. And all the new subscribers and all the views uh, you guys have given me and watching my videos. I really, really deeply appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to keep doing some more for you guys. Like I said, I try to do them every day if I can. Yesterday I got busy and just wasn't able to do much until late at night. So that's when we uh, installed the frets. So if you want to watch me install frets in this guitar, there is a video on it. So... Enjoy that if you if you uh, so desire. Anyway, guys, we'll see you real soon. Be good. Thanks again. Okie doke.